The private market allows you more control over your investments. Um, as I <clears throat> was thinking with a friend of mine from Europe, we saw capital markets in the United States and capital markets in the European sector, and we never thought that both sectors would be highly regulated at the same time, which is what happened post the crash in 2008. And so what we're seeing is capital's leaving those private markets and it's coming closer to home. And people want to Im have Im impact on what they invest in. They want to have sort of more control. And angel investing allows you uh, some more control than putting it in a fund or putting it in the stock market or picking a stock, which if you pick a single stock, the odds are good that you're not going to do well. You're better off following Eugene Fama's theory anyway. So. If you invest in things that you know, things that are close to home, you can bring your network to bear to help those companies grow. And so that's what we're seeing more and more and more with angel investing. So value-add angel investors do a lot of things. You wear a lot of hats. You just can't bring capital to the table, write a check, and walk away. Uh, we call that the spray and pray investing approach. Um, and some of the crowdfunded approaches that are out there now, like AngelList and some other, it really is more spray and pray. Um, a, a good angel investor writes the check, they bring to the table mentorship, they bring their network, they create customers, they create connections, they find talent and bring that to the company, they work for next round financing, they might assemble some bridge financing, they utilize their network to uh, create exits. So in Chicago here, we have a gazillion Fortune 500 companies that are acquiring other companies. So if you invest in companies that are in their line of business, you have a higher potential of having one of them exit through that Fortune 1000 company or whatever. And the odds are really good that somewhere, somewhere in the Chicago network, somebody knows somebody that works at that company that can get you through the door so that you can create a connection. And so that's what angels should do, good angels should do. When you go solo, you assume more risk. Uh, you're going by yourself. It's, it's the lone wolf out in the wilderness. Uh, if you have a lot of experience doing this, you can, you can assume that risk, and especially if you have the network necessary to analyze all the different companies that you're gonna come into contact with. The great thing about an angel group is companies come to you and you've got an entire group there to analyze it that's very diverse if the angel group is made up well. The best example I can give is at Hyde Park Angels we invested in YCharts, which is a stock research company. I looked at the company and I said, the front end is great, it's beautiful, I understand the stock research part. On the back end, the engineers all said, the guts of this company, the way it's coded, the way it comes up in search, the way that it interfaces with Google is excellent. That's why we invest in the company. You put two and two together, you have a great entrepreneur, and YCharts is raising third round VC capital right now. Um, that's the advantage of a good angel group. Um, you can do this by yourself, but there is a learning curve of angel investing, and um, it takes a while to get down that learning curve, and you have to absorb some lumps. To mitigate the risk associated with angel investing, there's certain things you do. Um, first thing is, we bet on jockeys and not horses. So a great jockey can take an average horse across the finish line, win, place, or show. A great horse with a crappy jockey isn't going to get across the line. So that's one thing. You really have to understand entrepreneurs. You have to be able to pick entrepreneurs that can drive value through companies. Um, you have to have a very um, open mind about ideas and understand the big picture of how everything fits together and be able to see the future a little bit. And then you have to have a network of people to use to bring value to the company.